and welcome to this Honkcast.com presentation brought to you by the Google Account from Crew. My name is Suns Fan, joining me as always Eno Sign. This is game three of the CSN Play Heroes number two finals between Easy and Port. Game three, that is, because it's one to one at this point. Zeno, how's it going? I refuse to crash. Mm, listening to the modulation in your voice. Glad to have you back. Why well, am I lagging now? <laughs> Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Why you have to throw everything off right <laughs> off the bat? I'm excited to see this game three. We did have uh, two games finished already for this best of three in the CSN finals between EZ and Han Portal. Basically, the uh, the moral of the story here is that carries win the carry, game. send the mid, and you instantly win the game no matter what. Yeah, pretty much. We'll see if that changes uh, a little bit as the bands are on their way here um for those of you joining us this is a a semi-new easy lineup with b kid and korok playing in place of b Diz and angry testy uh two big names that are no longer a part of uh team easy unfortunately for me because uh i really like b Diz, but you hey want his balls you in your mouth i know i, re I really do but um but yeah look at the bands think... shall we Shall we start with the bands, you know? Is that okay with you? I, I'm just curious. Do you think Korok is going to basically play another support hero this game? No. Let's have a vote. No. He's going to put down the lies. Like, I've had enough of support. Yeah. And that's kind of the interesting thing is, like, because of their lineup, some people are kind of forced to play out of position, I guess. So, uh, curious to see how that goes for them. As the bands are all completed, and for easy, they banned Zephyr, Master of Arms, and Jerezaya being banned and electrician so interesting bands for them um especially well whatever i won't get into that uh on the oh god side, plague rider tundra hellbringer and magmas is sun's fans screaming out in pain already i keep saying i gotta close my door now <laughs> okay so the sun's fan off to close his door afraid of excursions coming in from his crazy parents we are now off, and we do have a first pick of Nymphora, exactly the same as what they did in Game 1. And the one mistake that they did make in Game 1 is you know, they picked Nymphora, and we kind of went over this already in Game 1. Yes. But you have Nymphora. Now pick someone that actually does burst damage. Pick someone that you can TP around and gank with. You know, Traditionally, we've seen pairings, again, of Nymphora and Pebbles, which is a very, very good lineup. Well, keep in mind uh, that they like, won the game without that combo. They, they did, but it was disappointing to me. And you know me, True. I'm still very stubborn, and I refuse to admit that, that stupid things are mitigated by the fact that you win games. So, we'll see if they change up their lineup at all in regards to that. Um, and with that Nymphora pick, I imagine that Hanperl is like, oh no, here we go again. It's the same thing that we saw in game one. How do we adapt? How do we pick differently? So, you know, it'll be interesting to see what they decide to do as they're trying to figure out their first two picks right now and actually using a lot of time doing it. Yeah, and I wasn't here while you were going over the specific bands, but for me, nothing really out of the ordinary, although obviously the Nymph 4, as you said, kind of surprising they didn't ban her. I feel like you have to ban that hero against uh, when you're playing against Easy, because it's an automatic pick. You know they're going to pick her. I mean, literally every game that she's available, they will pick, basically. Uh, Port picking up Behemoth and Corrupted Disciples, so Magmus and Behemoth not on the board for Mr. Semiju or B-Kid. So that should be interesting to see what they end up going. I mean, Pharaoh is still on the board, I believe. Yes, he's still on the board, so wouldn't be too surprised with that pickup either. They do still need a, a some sort of a solo, although Torture is also still available. So that's, now that I think about that, that is a tier one pick. So now that it's in the round two of picks, that's kind of surprising that she's, he, is, it's a she. She's lasted that long. Here we go again. <laughs> Where's the dress? It's a she. Well, that is a little bit surprising, and Torture actually still on the board as well. That's another hero that, you know, is this first pick material, essentially. So surprising to see that they let that go for, you know, picking something like Behemoth, who just, you know, Behemoth isn't really a hero that's played, again, all that frequently. Um, Corrupt Disciple, that's a, a solid pick that we definitely see being played a lot, so no complaints there. Chubby Chris obviously had some success with CD. Did you say uh, Behemoth isn't picked two. consistently? I, uh, yes, isn't played consistently, as I have to say. Partially yeah. because it's being banned a lot. But again, it's just mm -hmm. not a hero that fits into... He's not banned a lot. I'm going to call you Adzino. He's not All banned right, a lot, fine. and he's played a lot. So you can eat my balls. Now, unfortunately for you, I do have some actual statistics on that. Maybe we can go over <laughs> afterwards, but yeah. either way, uh, uh, he is not a hero that I necessarily like all that much. Uh, in the current metagame, 
And okay, so we do have pebbles being picked Yay. up by Semi Chew. Thank you for a pebbles. That's like peanut butter and jelly, okay? Where's the Who honey? That... Is torture the honey? Um, I like honey in my peanut mm. butter and jelly. I'm not sure who would be the honey in this case. I feel like peanut butter and jelly and honey is kind of unhealthy, but it's delicious. I recommend it to everybody listening and watching and the people that love peanut butter and jelly. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Dimphora, well. Pebbles, very good together. As you said, Torture probably going to be solely. I don't believe that B-Kid's going to be playing that, unless they're playing another support Torture, which I guess remains to be seen. I do expect Korak to perhaps play that Torture, because... He's probably itching to play somebody that actually does something in this series. That would be great for him, I'm sure. Um, and on the other side, we have Rhapsody picked up, and I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm going to go with Valkyrie as well. So kind of a really, really standard lineup. And, I mean, you could easily make a tri lane out of this in any which way you want. Valkyrie, either in the tri lane, is like a death tri lane, although they don't have that. They don't have really that third stun, although Rhapsody is kind of a stun. I really expect Valkyrie to probably be in the solo side or something like that. As Glacius again picked up. And Yoda's probably going to play this one, I would assume, not Korok. Um, and the right-clicking Mage Bane. That Mage would be interesting Bane again. <laughs> again. So this actually is very similar to the lineup that they picked in Game 1 in a lot of ways. Are you ahead um, of me or something? Are you sure they picked him? Oh, no, they haven't picked him yet. Okay. As they just pick him right now. Okay, good. Just making sure my computer isn't five seconds behind during the picking stages. That would be awful. No, it doesn't quite fail that badly. So they feel very comfortable, I guess, with that accommodation, I would imagine. Well, you're just going to see them send it right back to mid again? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Well, I think Chu's going to end up playing um, the Mage Bane and Nymph. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, they could, the, the thing I do like about this line is, although they do play a lot of similar roles, a lot of these players can play a lot of different heroes. Like, you saw Korok playing support, which we haven't really seen too often, but it's not always the case with pro players. Like, it's not always the case where a player can play every single role very well. It's actually kind of rare. But I feel like this lineup has that potential. Oof. And last pick, Drunken Master, which we have seen before, but only in fail situations. Yeah, <laughs> seen before I hope, very rarely and not I too much I hope they success. pick the alt. No, pick the, pick the alt, please. Although it'd probably be worse off for the people watching because I will be doing a white trash impersonation, southern accent, so to speak, for a very long period of time. So it's probably best for everybody else that they don't pick that up. But Drunken Master, what do you think about that? That's really weird. I I really don't know what to make of that, to be honest. Um, I I mean, there's so many other good heroes that they could have picked. And, you know, quickly going back to the Behemoth thing, you know, that's a, at least at the very least is a good combination with a hero like Valkyrie uh, with two long-range kind of stuns that combo very well together. So glad to see that. But Drunken Master can put out a lot of damage, um, very similar to a lot of other heroes that play a lot of the same kind of mold, like Panda, uh, like Monkey King. But uh, you know, what we'll see how it goes for our cuddly drunken friend, I guess. But not a huge fan of the Drunken Master pick. Um, on the other hand, Team Easy basically going with something very similar to the yeah, I mean, this is basically the kind of lineup that won them the first game of this best of three series. So I think they feel confident in this kind of lineup here. So they basically replace uh, Emerald Warden, who's 0 and 2 in this series now, with a drunken master who's like 0 and a million in any other series. But and this is the weird thing. Now I don't mind the drunken master pick because in certain situations you can really work it. Now this is a hero that has to take off though. You have to get him early farm, early levels at early stage. I said early three times, but early. Uh, Rhapsody? I don't know though. I think that's the weirder pick to be honest. I think a Demented Shaman is something you pair up with a Drunken Master. Not a Rhapsody who doesn't have that much survivability early in the game. I mean, Disco yeah, I mean, Inferno just game, sucks. At least they early. had a Tempest. Um, <clears throat> to help out with a lot of that pushing has some creeps that benefit from the dance floor and now it's just you know, it, it's not like it, Rhapsody is a bad hero by any means in any situation but doesn't necessarily fit into that lineup as well as it did in that original game one. Yeah, there's really no push of blades. We hear the Halloween cries in the background, just barely, a faint little Speaking laugh. of Halloween, are you, uh, you going to dress up? I, I know um, it's a little bit late for the Halloween parties, as it is Sunday. I have night. never been to uh, like an but... adult Halloween party, actually. So you don't it's have kind any weird. kind of costumes? Well, uh, the, the weird th this is the club. thing. No, I don't dress up anymore. I used to, obviously, as a kid. But for some reason, it's always like the sun's 
debut, season debut on Halloween. So I'm always at home just watching them in excitement because I've been waiting like an entire summer after a whole, you know, failure of season or whatever you want to call it. So I'm really excited to watch them play. But this time there's a lockout. So I just sat home and did literally nothing because I'm not used to, you know, participating in Halloween, Halloween festivities. You should probably go over your time real quick, just in case. As I'm at 48, 49, yeah. 50 going right I don't understand how I end up five seconds here. off Because later. you're just that awesome. As we are back to our friendly matchup in mid, you see that instead of having a solo Polywog Priest, I actually went with a Drunken Master and Rhapsody. So that's a little bit interesting. Two heroes that can at least temporarily prevent uh, a lot of mobility from Mage Vane, so I think they'll at least be slightly better off than that Polywog Ferret, I think ended up going like 1-7 in seven in that game, uh, game 1 that is, so yeah. it's really kind of hard to do much worse than that I guess, so that's not saying too much, but they made an adjustment there. Uh, at top lane, you have that Nymphora Pebbles combination going up against CD Behemoth, and both sides of that are able to output a decent amount of damage. You know, I'm kind of curious to see who's going to win that top lane. Is at bottom, you have a Torture Valkyrie matchup. That's another pretty good matchup, too. So we have two very interesting side lanes and then a middle lane where I don't really know if too much is going to happen right off the bat either way. I don't As, really like Wow, Ooh, my God. That was. Wow, that was, that was close. much closer than I thought it was going to be. As Valkyrie immediately has to use that health pot and Torture jumps out to a very good advantage in the bottom lane. I don't really like Port's lineup, to be honest. I mean, the fact that... Oh, I mean, what, the Drunken Master didn't sell it for I you? I don't right? dislike Drunken Master, as you know, in certain situations. Magebane destroys him, though. He is so reliant on mana regeneration because of that. He's pretty much useless if he doesn't get Drink off, which is a channeling ability, which I guess doesn't make any difference. But the fact that he needs so much mana to just spam that constantly and actually do damage with his stagger. And that's the thing a lot of people don't know. His stagger is actually probably his most important ability... Uh, in the early to mid stages, he's going to gain a ton of damage as long as he's drunk after using it. But, yeah, the common skill build him, I think, is like a 1-1-3 one, one, three with 3 yeah. points into that stagger ability. So uh, definitely able to put out a lot of damage early in the game. And I think hopefully they're hurting. Man, that is just ridiculous. As right off the bat, you see Mage Man harassing, doing a lot of damage. Rhapsody has to use that health pot, so already down in that respect. And yeah, I think maybe they're hoping to harass Mage Vane. Like, this is kind of the key. If you get him down to half health, he's not going to want to blink in and do this kind of harassing mana combustion, like crazy auto attack uh, tactic that he's been basically doing for this endgame one. As you see, Drunken Master try and put a little bit of damage on, but you know, if they can't successfully do that, they're just going to have another miserable time in that middle lane. Yeah, and I think they should add. S2 hopefully is watching this to make Drunken Master a little bit better. If you use his, as I'm checking his ability names, because I never remember, if you use his lunge ability on somebody and you bash him into a wall, that should count as like an extra stun, kind of like a Kraken charge. I feel like that would help in his usefulness because he's. It's hard to find him. It's hard to make him useful in lineups, I guess. It's hard to find lineups that would make him useful, is the best way to put it. And this is. Ugh. I hate to be, you know. A downer a right? against Mage Bane. Uh, it's just a terrible pick against Mage Bane. I don't know who, who picked first though. Was Drunken Master last pick? Yes. So, yeah, so that doesn't yeah, make any sense. That. As he's going to initiate on by both Mage Bane and Glacius, and he just, I mean, look at his life. It just dwindles in the the red yeah, and zone. And you can really see as long as Mage Bane has enough health to feel like he can get in and out of these little uh, forays here into the, uh, the Hellborn side of that river and just continue to put some auto attack, you know, harassment damage, he's not really going to be too afraid in this 2v2 matchup. He has no problem continuing to go in and harass down all that mana and do a bunch of damage with his auto attacks. So I think, you know, EZ is going to end up winning that middle uh, matchup at top you know, it's going to be interesting to see if they can put out enough damage to maybe uh, get a, a kill on someone as we see some action actually. Corrupted taking a decent amount of damage from the combination of stuns there for his zeal and the uh, pebble stun, but now he's just continuing to put a lot of pressure on there. You saw he put Coach oh. Conduit on barely manages to not kill Nymphora. And there oh my God. is uh, a Too kill. late, Mr. Behemoth. Too late, I'm yeah, sorry. And <laughs> you do have uh, Behemoth not managed to get really a great placement on that fissure and uh 
A kill goes on to Chubby Chris playing CD, so that's not a great start for them at top. Meanwhile, you do have an oh. arrow coming in, hitting Glacius, so they take him down. Uh, good job by them at least getting a kill there, and you see that Mage Bane can't really be that aggressive and go after a Drunken Master that was almost dead because there were three players there. So, yeah, you know, at least Master. they managed to uh, answer the call and even the kills up at a one for one. Drunken Master has a bottle now, so that's going to help in his regeneration. As long as he can get some sort of rune control, which he's going to need a lot of help from Rhapsody, since Mage Bay can just... Although, I don't know if he's going to proceed. I don't know if he's going to even go for the runes. He could easily control the runes, though, with his Blink ability. But it's going to, you know, not allow him to farm as much. As Valkyrie's still trying to hit some arrows here on Mage Bane. Yeah, not going to happen. That's, that's good that Valkyrie's putting some pressure on mid. All that, all that says to me is I lost the bottom lane. Yeah. Well, that's not <laughs> and, a surprise, uh, though. Not too much of a surprise, obviously, going up against a, a Torturer there, who's a very powerful solo hero. As you see that Valkyrie's like, oh, thank god I can go at least maybe try and defend this uh, regeneration rune here at bottom. Glacius is going to try and make his way over. It gets cut off, though. So Drunken Mass is going to make a run for that, and now Glacius might be caught in an awkward situation. Staccato goes out, and man, Rhapsody actually ends up getting the final hit on there, and Mage going to have to fall back again. So, you know, in the end, they've at least gotten a couple kills onto Rhapsody, but on the other hand, that's just going to allow more experience for, for Mage Bane in that mid lane. Yep, I mean, it's kind of a back and forth to really think about it, but... And I... I, uh, I don't know. I'm going to stop looking at middle lane because I can't stop thinking of negative things to say. <laughs> but meanwhile, let's look at the stats, shall we? Uh, Mage Bane at 27 and 9, so... Or 28 and 9 now. 29 and 9. I'm just going to count up every time he gets a creep, creep kill. Top farmer in his on his team, not too far behind, uh, is Torturer, though. Who, as you said, is winning this bottom lane pretty con convincingly as Valkyrie only has 7 creep kills. So, absolute yeah, domination. But the thing I'm kind of uh, surprised about is that Drunken Master has as many creep kills as he does, uh, considering that Easy can be ridiculously aggressive if they want to be. Uh, Nymphora getting a little blocked off here, but uh, should be should be fine. Meanwhile, Pebbles is going to try to run away from this Behemoth and Corrupt Disciple lineup, but fortunately, Behemoth does not have enough to stun again, so he should be fine as well. And oof. It really is going to come down to this middle lane. It, all series long, which is crazy, it's been about this middle lane. Is Glacier's taking a lot of damage from Drunken Master. Is going to get the kill. Now Rhapsody is going to take some counter initiation from from uh, little nope. Chu, who's going to easily get that. Oh, oh my, please, don't make me look. Like <laughs> God, he had it. He had it. And yeah, the actual, I think he was trying to get his ult off there at the last second and just could not quite cast it before Fog ended up breaking the uh, cast there. So good job by Raps, at least not giving up that kill to Mage Bane. And I think Mage Bane is probably like 3-0 and at this point in the game, uh, in game one. So at the very least, they've at least managed to slow down his farm slightly. He's farming at 240, which is, again, a little bit lower than he was in game one. So... I guess in that sense their strategy is working a little bit better, but as you said, I mean, Valkyrie eight and four creep score is just not very good. Not gonna uh, do it for a solo land. As he manages to leap away, avoiding the stun there, but he's really struggling to get anything going against B Kid, who's playing torture, obviously very well. I mean, he's completely dominating that lane. Forty-one and eighteen is his creep score so far. And look at the gold per minute tab here. Uh, very, very top heavy for easy, but that's not necessarily a bad thing considering the heroes that they're on, especially a Pebbles and Mage Bane. Yeah, uh, Pebbles is the hero you want to get as much gold on as possible to allow him to maybe get around, be more mobile. You'll probably see him go for Steam Boots first and maybe try and utilize Nymphora for that mobility right off the bat and uh, get around and get some ganks going, but we'll see what they decide to do there. Maybe we're gonna have a st uh, stalagmites here. As oh, nice oh, toss from nice. Pebbles on top of Nymphora's face, and Nymphora's gonna get the last hit on Corrupted Disciple. It's gonna be the end of his life. And two for, or one for zero exchange, I guess. But Behemoth is gonna be all lonely here, and I think this is pretty safe to say that Easy has one top lane as well. So pretty much have won every lane for the most part. Mid lane not necessarily a stomp though, because Drunken Master is getting farm, but. What is he going to end up doing with that is the question. He picks up ghost, early Ghost Marchers as well as that bottle as we were talking about. And what is he going to go for next? Because they need to do something to stop this this Mage Bane. Or anybody for that matter. Even even a Pebbles here is going to miss his Stalagmites. Now it looks like the Corrupt Disciple is going to try to chase down a, a Nymphora. But Nymphora is going to use the heal to try to get away. Now Corrupted Conduit is placed onto Pebbles and both should be fine. So 
Not a whole. Ooh, who, what did we miss? Rhapsody uh, actually came. Oh in, wow! Fortunately for Nymphora, and got the kill there. So good timing. Uh, yeah, did not work out too great for her. She tried to stick around and help out Pebbles, but at the very least, at least Pebbles is surviving at this point. He does have a thousand gold, so uh, if he does not decide to go Steam Boots now, that means he's gonna maybe go for a Portal Key right away and uh, just try and be aggressive and maybe get some ganks going here. As we have Pebbles getting very close to dying there, the Fissure manages to block him for a little bit, but not enough magic damage to get the kill at this point. What's your time? And I'm at 1032. Yeah, that's right. Mm. And speaking of, you know, the 10 minute mark, kind of the, the general standards, you want to be around 50 creep kills if you're farming pretty well at 10 minutes, and you see that Torture is uh, definitely doing a great job farming away there. Mage Vein not far behind at 46. And on the other side, you do have a couple of heroes farming around. You know, they, they have 40 uh, creep kills so far, but unfortunately for Chubby Chris, this is not really the, the thing that he had hoped for playing Corrupt Disciple. Last time he really got a bunch of free farm. I think he got a couple of kills early. This time, he's 0 and 2 uh, and not really able to get that crazy farm and really be left alone there at top like he was in the second game where they ended up winning. Magebane has Helm Black Legion. Didn't get it quite as early as he did last time we were casting him, game one. Um, gonna be going for the Steam Boots, I believe, and then Geo's right afterwards. Pretty much standard build, as we've talked about many well, a time. Well, I feel like this game, I think we, like a lot of things you can say, it's just not as early as last time. But in the end, I think you're still seeing the same pattern is, I mean, who's who's the hardest carry in this game? It's Magebane, who's getting mm -hmm. farm while Magebane is. You know, and then this time, they're going to have a good mid-game presence with Pebbles, with Nymphora being able to uh, go around using that ultimate to uh, set up some good ganks here. As speaking of ganks, we might have Drunken Master sneaking over towards Torture. Ooh. Torture doesn't have a lot of health, and there's Initiation. There's the Stagger going in. Great job. Oh, oh. no, but a missed <laughs> arrow from Valkyrie. Oh, dear. Oh, that's another I thing. I mean, it was close range, so it's not... A huge deal, but that was not good. As meanwhile yeah. in mid wraps, he's like, "Ah, oh, just get this guy away from me." Gets uh, driven all the way back to the tower there. I mean, that's the other thing with Drunken Master is Pebble's going to take a lot of damage here, but I do believe he's going to get away. Uh, it's hard to set up stuns like layer stuns with a Drunken Master because he just pushes people <laughs> in a certain mm -hmm. direction. So it's never know what's coming next, right? Unless you like throw an arrow beforehand and he throws him into the arrow, which would still be kind of difficult to do. But I'm sure these pro teams could do it, no problem, no problem at all. But still, very, you know, something you have to think about in the picking stages. Wow, Semi Jew is going to get stuck here. Nice block off by Behemoth, going to get the ease. Oh my god! He tosses Behemoth away in disgust, but he's that dead. That was a great try there by Semi Jew, tossing him over the Fissure. If that was just a little bit sooner where the Fissure was still up, he might have had a chance to uh, escape. As yeah, a Rhapsody Nymphora. again, putting some damage onto a Nymphora. Great stun, but there's the Fissure getting the kill onto Nymphora. But B kid doing a lot of damage. He's level 10 now with Torturous, so he manages to go up to top and pick up a kill. That is his first kill, but he's definitely farming. You know, at a pretty nice rate at 300 gold per minute. Yep, top in the game as well, and look forward to seeing him as some illusions are going to get destroyed here mid. Now, how many towers do we have? No towers yet at the 13 minute mark. Not, I mean, not the most surprising thing, considering we don't really have the greatest of pushing teams, although Nymphora can really help in that. Um, but again, Mage Bane just farming mid. Not much they can do about it because they can't layer stuns as well, thanks to the Truck and Master pick. Now, what do you think they're... Like, try to think from their perspective here when picking a Drunken Master. Now, let's just assume that oh, they've used him... Oh, come on, by him. the core in my voice after they picked that, I think you know full well <laughs> what I would be thinking if I was in their shoes. I'd be like, oh, what the heck did we just do? Yeah. Well, but... no, I'm sure it's not like a random pick, though. You know they've played this lineup. Yeah, well, again, the interesting thing with their lineup, although Mage Vein was a very late pick, is they have a bunch of heroes that can do a decent job of carrying. But, again, versus Mage Vein, as Mage Vein's actually being harassed down there in mid, you know, Valkyrie can kind of carry, but cannot carry Mage Vein. You know, CD, again, a decent carry, but, uh... So overall, you know, they do have some carry potential, they do have some physical DPS potential on their team, but they don't really have that hard late game carry that they can kind of rely on to definitely win the game if they make it long enough and if he's farming well enough. Now Puppet Master, who's a great hero against a Mage Bane, what was he... nerfed with him again? I can't remember. It wasn't that big of a nerf. Well, people are going right. back and forth, but his uh, Whiplash, I think, got a substantial nerf. And oh, yeah, people. That's right. We're not thrilled with that, and there are also some changes made to his ultimate. 
I thought he was pretty balanced, to be honest. Kind of, I was kind of surprised by that too. But I haven't actually played him since the changes. I think I played one game of Han since we've been doing so much casting stuff lately, which is unfortunate. Haven't gotten to play that new Gemini hero either. I hear he's a real, a real dream. Well, hey, after this, let's uh. Let's yeah. throw it down. As we have a Nymphora TP up there into the top jungle, let's we'll see if they can get the combo off as Mage Vane's coming in to maybe try and clean up. See if we can get the last hit. As an ultimate from Behemoth temporarily saves him, and now Drunken Mask is going to try and do a lot of damage to this Mage Vane, who's going to blink back to safety up the cliff. I don't think they're going to be able to pursue all that far. A great long range zeal being thrown down by Nymphora to make sure there'd be no staccato used in this event. Uh, wow, and Torture actually. Huge overextension from Nymphora and, oh, not Nymphora, Rhapsody and Drunken Master. There. They get caught out in the middle of nowhere, surrounded 2v5, and just get absolutely melted. So I didn't, I think they weren't really expecting, like, the whole easy team to be rolling up there in mid, and they they just got caught out and paid the price. Yeah, I mean, with his Torture, does he have Impale yet? Yeah, he is in level 3 Impale, actually, so it should be a very, very, very easy tower kill. And meanwhile, at bottom, we're going to have... Valkyrie just finally getting some time for herself, you know, get some, got some beauty sleep, quality, quality got, alone maybe time. a little facial here and there. Uh oh, then Forest coming up with a Pebbles, but Pebbles unfortunately does not have a portal key as of yet, so Valkyrie will go down. Wow, our Valkyrie will get away. So tier one tower actually taken out by the creeps, surprisingly enough. So weren't able to get there in time to deny that. So basically one for one exchange in the towers, tower department. Corrupted disciple in the meantime. I mean, not really. Eh. 16 minute mark hasn't officially finished anything other than steam boots. Yeah, I mean he is he's CSing very well. He's at 77 and 35, which is good. You know, but he has died a couple times unfortunately. Uh, which is slowing down his farm and again, he's a hero where in a lot of cases it's great when you get him going, you get a helm of the Black Legion and uh, can let him really use his corrupted conduit as a damage getter. It's a 4.5 second arrow goes on to Mage Vane, she's in a lot of trouble. It's absolutely destroyed. Great job by Valkyrie getting that arrow on to Chu there. And I think he managed to get that just enough in the trees that Chu just did not see it coming. Portal key picked up on Pebbles, by the way. He used it there just to evade the incoming squad from Hellborn. Wow. So Glacius is actually going to get caught off guard, uh, get chased down in the end. And, I mean, that's a nice, yeah, great well, kill on Mage this is the first point in the game, yeah, where we're like, whoop, there's, that's like a, a little whoop, bit of a there it is. from whoop. Uh, Easy as we throw down the, the awesome music. But that, this is kind of like I like how like that bothers you. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> We do have Rhapsody in a little bit of trouble as Pebbles goes in and throws in the combination, but Valkyrie is managing to successfully dodge through the trees. Pebbles does have a good amount of mana there. Oh. Not enough for a combination, but definitely enough for a stun. I mean, Valkyrie is kind of hanging out in the trees, does not have enough for a TP, and by that I mean does not have a TP, so we'll see what Valkyrie decides to do, maybe re-engaging. As Rhapsody oh. tries to go in and help out and just ends up feeding instead. Corrupt, oh no, they're just going in one at a time. This is not a good team fight from Port. Now CD's going to go down and they're going to put the chase onto Behemoth. And Valkyrie's just staying still up there in the trees. We do have a Drunken Master going into the fight too. To just, what? Oh dear. I, I mean, they know. end up not really losing too many people, but that was about as close to like going in one at a time. This is like an old kung fu movie or something. Like, yeah, we have like 8 million people, and we're just going to all, all attack. You know, just, I mean, Valkyrie is still sitting point. in the same... I mean, he had, he had a nice arrow on... Oh, my God. That was the going to fight. Oh, my oh. God. How do they even see him? I'm kind of shocked at that. So, Valkyrie's still... Okay, now she uses the ultimate. Yeah, the level 1 ult is going to run right into Torture, and I think Torture knows exactly what's happening. Oh, up. Valkyrie. Valkyrie. He's just going to go back. <laughs> <laughs> to sneak back oh. into the trees but oh. pebbles like oh. right onto her and this is not looking good wow at all for port and that, that is... was a team fight where they Ugh. ended up in the very end losing three people and they really didn't put anyone at easy like at any risk at all like there was no risk of people at easy dying in that team fight yeah, if anything they should have you know gone in right away oh wow so sustainer bought by Mage Bane, so he's gonna be going for a Ruined Cleaver, unless he goes for something weird like a, uh, a Null Stone, but highly doubt that. That's gonna allow him, I mean, the, the one good thing, well, there's many good things. The one bad thing from Ruined Cleaver is obviously you're gonna be farming a lot more, so it probably won't be in as many fights as you may be if you had a Geo Bane or something like that. But, on the other hand, you have a lot of mana regeneration, which I think is huge on him. You can just blink, do whatever you want, take out, you know, neutral camps without issue, 
and your farm will go up substantially. Plus, you gain a lot of damage as well. So it's. I know you personally don't like the item. I get it on him because I love it. But it does I just slow don't down like the, the game item a because I don't like sitting around farming for like forty-five minutes. Right. And like, really, when you get that item, it's just like okay. When you like when you get a rune claimer, it's not really an item in and of itself that makes you that great in team fights because you just don't have that much health. And basically, it's like, all right, well, I got my rune cleaver. All right, guys, BRB, I'm gonna go farm in the jungle for the next 12, 13 minutes and uh, actually get my item that will allow me to participate in team fights. Right. So. so you're talking about from a spectator standpoint, you don't. Well, like and seeing. from me playing with you, watching you farm while I have to play support and well, get picked up. Well, the difference, like, yeah, no, the, and I end up winning the game for us. So at the end of the day, you should be happy with the win and not your KD R. Which <sighs> I suppose is very that's true, low. although. Uh, it is a little low, unfortunately. I think it is just above, just above one, which is a little depressing. Yeah, this I'd be depressed. Speaking of low, uh, I've lost like eight games in a row, and I think my MMR is now in the 1750s or something. Oh my so, god! Uh, yeah, that is How awful. That? For you, that's awful. It is. Yeah, it's a little. Not, if you're if you're normally 1750, that's still fine. For people out there that are offended. So by you're it. just saying that I have to be the one that sucks balls. That's yeah. Fine. Yeah, I don't much. know what's happened to me. It's not been a good. Uh, month is so four heroes of new earth as uh yeah i, I kind of feel like i'd be playing on team four right now just feeling like i'm definitely screwed right now and don't have much to do as actually good initiation on the b kid there's an arrow onto him as well 4.5 second arrow great job by uh Nymphora. he's getting a stun in there and glacier's channeling that ultimate uh ult got a recent buff actually which i think really helped out glacius but this overall is going very well for port as more damage goes on picking off glacius there and they're just going to continue chasing this entire way down the uh, bottom lane as Chu's going to have to be careful. He doesn't want to get picked off here either. And you're going to see, I think, Pebbles just sacrificing himself for the good of the team. Oh, and wow, that's a great job. If they can turn this around, CD's in a lot of trouble. So we'll see low. if Chu can pick him off. One last auto attack will do it there, and he gets the kill. So that could have gone much worse for Easy than it did. Pebbles went in, did a lot of damage with the combination. And then uh, Chu managed to get in and get another kill. He's now 1-1-4. One, one, uh, not great, but not bad by any means. It means that he hasn't died and kept his farm up. He's at 360 gold per minute. So. Yeah, at the end of the day, he just fin he has enough to finish, his, uh, which he just picks up. Rune Cleaver. He stays alive through that fight, so he doesn't die. Gets a lot of experience in the meantime. I mean, he's level 13. Let's, look, let's just compare that to the rest of the Hellborn team. And he's the highest level in the entire game, tied with Torturer. So, yeah, talking about experience for me. Definitely rocking that experience for a minute versus uh, Chubby Chris, who basically just AFK. Will you stop saying point. his name? I can't not say that name. I love it. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't like, like I thinking don't say of any penises. other names the entire thing <laughs> except for his. Yeah. So Chubby Chris, big shout out. I love you. Something love about name. his name, huh? And the fact that there's a two afterwards, like the original Chubby Chris was taken, you know? That's true. That's kind of weird. <laughs> it's like, eh. It's like if Suns fans, well, that would be more understandable because there's a lot of Suns fans in the world out there. Yeah, a lot of depressed fans in the world. Yeah. As a Demented Shaman, I mean, not Demented Shaman, what the heck am I even talking about? Corrupted Disciple. Demented Shaman, Corrupted uh, Disciple, same thing. Yeah, yeah, it was the same thing. Yeah, both do minus physical armor. Uh, you know, it's going to be curious to see what he really decides to go for next because I think he's going to be working towards a shrunken head. Uh, which is a, a decent pickup. They do do a lot of magic damage on that team, but not going to help out all that much against Mage Bane in the end. Uh, and that's probably the hero that he's going to have to go toe to toe with. So, kind of curious as Ooh. far as that goes. I mean, if you go something like uh, a Frostwolf Skull, as we have action actually going into mid, there's an ultimate from uh, Valkyrie Line for some better positioning. Beacon in a oh. lot of trouble. Crazy oh. tablets. We'll see if he can make a run for it. Stagger almost kills him. Now all that movement speed will finish the job. But now Drunken Mass is in a lot of trouble getting stuck there in the trees. Ultimate from Glacius. Not really necessary. And not the best placement in the world. As a 4.5 second arrow goes on to Mage Vein with a Fissure. So I don't know if Mage Vein really just does that much damage to uh Oh that. my they god. They turn around and finish off Rhapsody instead. It's a little bit of a consolation prize for Team Easy in that team fight. Yeah, poor better be careful though, because they're kind of low. I mean, the drunken master picking up a soul's bulwark is really going to help. And of course, he, since all his spells basically do physical yeah, damage, that's a great item on him. And obviously, for pushing ability, they honestly they need to push, because especially when they see a rune cleaver on mage bane, they know all right they're going to be sitting back and farm. It's kind of like picking up a an alchemist bones. 
Yep. Same kind of mentality. You see somebody picking that up, and you're like, okay, they're going to be farming the entire game. So, in essence, the only way to counter that is to either go and kill them in the jungle or wherever they're farming, or just push and end the game. And well, I don't yeah, think when they I see have an Alchemist uh, Bones in a hero, like within the first 10 minutes, and I'm playing any kind of game here, the first thing I think is, oh my god, that's like a free kill, and I'm heading right over to that lane right now. Right, but the only problem um, is with Mage Bane, he has so much yeah. survivability and escapability. <laughs> it, it makes it very difficult, uh, especially because they don't have a great amount of you know targeted disables or anything like that, so uh, they could have probably picked a better team for going against the Mage Bane. And Mage Bane has 2.1k to boot on top of that, so it can pick up the ultimate order if he yeah, wants to. Yeah, so they're going to try and initiate on him, but uh, good job by him, maybe knowingly or not knowingly, dodging that arrow and not getting himself into trouble there. And, you know, this is kind of the point in the game where I I don't really know when, when the deciding factor is for Team Easy to maybe start to be a little bit more aggressive or if they're just going to sit back and say, we're, we're going to let you guys pour it, make the first move here. Well, the, As, the good uh, thing about their lineup is they have a great mix. I mean, Nymph 4, we haven't really seen the ultimate come into effect yet, the teleport with pebbles and whatnot. Uh, they can be very aggressive with everybody except, well, I mean, even Mage Bane can be aggressive, but they have the option of just ganking horribly with four players while Mage Bane sits back and farm, which, if you really think about it, is exactly what Angry Testy did in while he was on easy. Listen, so, you ruined their team chemistry. <laughs> I dare you. Yeah, I don't really know what's up with that. It just seems a little odd. Another basically forcing Korok to switch to support, which. As a fan of Korok, it seems like a little bit of a waste, or at least from from a spectating slash casting point of view. It I'd love to see him go, yeah, you know, play some Fade or something, just run around killing people. It'd be I like think he's days, uh, but... he's being punished for playing Dota too. I think. Yeah. <laughs> at the end of the day, well, I guess happening. that's one way to do it. You're like, yeah, for every game of Dota two you play, you have to play a game of uh, support where you're miserable. Yeah, pretty much. So Portal Key picked up on Behemoth level nine. So. Kind of like last game, the Behemoth picking up a portal key at level 9, and you saw that the difference it made. Huge difference. Really wants to get the level 2 ultimate, though, but not really close at all to level 11. Uh, they're going to be pushing this tier 1 tower. It doesn't look like much resistance is going to be placed upon it, as Glacius, I don't think, can really hold this by himself, unless it's a pro Glacius. Well, it's an interesting like use. They kind of want to defend it now, because they use that uh, rune of fortification, or whatever the heck it is, but instead they decide to just waste it and then not go in at all, which yeah, I know that, you absolutely love. Peeve, that's though, a big pet so. peeve. I, I, I could go into a speech about it right now, but I'm not going to. Yeah. I'm going to try to not go into it. That'll actually. be a first. <laughs> yeah. As Mage Man has a fire brain. He's going to get initiated by the Drunken Master, but there's... Wow, Pebble's absolutely decimating Rhapsody in the face there. There's the Behemoth. I'll do quite a bit of damage. Glacier's going to get absolutely insta-give. Then four in the meantime. Wow, mana riff from Mage Man did so much AoE damage. That is ridiculous. So three dead for Hellborn. So three for two exchange at this point. And... I mean, Mage Bane is going to try to find Valkyrie. Not going to happen. So, is he going to turn his attention to Drunken Master? The answer is no, apparently. So, three for two exchange. I mean, what do we have? We have Nymphora and Glacius. So, two support heroes dying for easy. While you know, Corrupted, Behemoth, and Rhapsody. Essentially, the only difference is the Corrupted getting killed. Which was yeah, huge. I'm glad to at least see. Oh, oh wow. Make that, make that him as well. It's caught out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, they didn't really have words up or anything so that was just Chu going and farming their jungle and then coming across a tasty little treat there a Halloween treat not a treat delicious and uh, gets to kill and drunken master but uh, I was about to complain that CD was doing more of the whole shrunken head thing and not going for a frostal skull which would be very good against mage Bane. Uh, but you do see that Valkyrie is picking up an ice brand instead so at least they're they're getting some sort of slow one way or another yeah, I think the shrunken head, uh, although I don't like it technically. Well, this isn't really early. I guess it's 20 minute, 28 minutes in. So as we actually a shrunken head picked up on Torturer. Um, I, I do like it because the fact that he died almost instantly in that fight. So that's definitely <laughs> giving some survivability. We have Frostwolf Skull, which we have not seen as much lately since the nerf. Which, if you remember... Uh, now, we're just assuming Valkyrie is going for Frostwolf because it is excellent against Mage Bane. But on a range here, it's going to give you less yeah, slow. Yeah, slightly less, and they changed the stats a little bit to be more strength-centric and right. not necessarily as great for like the range agility carries. But, I mean, it's still definitely a good item, and I think an item that would be good in this game specifically. But uh, I think at this point, if you're, if you're Valkyrie, you're probably not thinking you can farm all the way to a Frostwolf Skull. So maybe you'll see Valkyrie just pick up the uh, Frostburn instead, 
and, and then try maybe, to split it up after. Uh, you know, at least then she'll have a little bit more scalability as far as her items throughout the entire game because they need to win team fights now. Yeah, you know, they can't spend all this time trying to save up for five, six k kind of crazy items. They really need to kind of get going in this game. As you see the back door from Mage Bane, they really knew that they're going to go for that and baited him. Mm -hmm. But we'll, I don't think they can finish off the job. He's just too tanky, and the uh, illusions kind of threw everyone off for a little bit of a loop there as well. So he does a good job going in there and getting that tower and. Oh, Valkyrie ult's going to be used to try to get Drunken Master, but there's a nice Ward of Revelation by Korok going to be used. Drunken Master just running right next to it, but he's going to get away for now. Uh, Blink is going to be up, and actually is up for for Tiny or Pebbles right now. There's the Rhapsody ult going to try to keep everybody alive, but <laughs> Pebbles is just going to toss Drunken Master in her face. In the meantime, Torch is going to take some damage from Drunken Master, but at the end, Drunken Master is going to go down to that Pebbles. And Fora will die as a result, though, so it's a 1 for 1 exchange. Corrupt Disciple has the Shrunken Head, uh, used it, so that's a 10 second charge. I didn't even see him use it until the very end there. Uh, in the meantime, Torture is, I would think, going to go down. Nice ultimate there, going to ensure the kill for Behemoth. But in the meantime, Rhapsody goes down as well. So yeah, with that easy, just damage, dominating. Now. Is just tearing through everyone. He will be mm. five, one, and seven. So all of a sudden, Chu is starting to take off five hundred and fifty gold. Well, look, per okay, look at his damage right now. So with double damage, okay, it was at three sixty. Look at his normal damage, actually, two hundred normal damage. Add in the 64 mana burn damage you get. He's doing 264 damage, 31 minutes in the game. It's ridiculous. Now, well, the only I mean, thing about Mage Bane that doesn't really scale, well, or there's no scale unless you get the items for it, is you can't really catch up to people without having to blink on them. So I think a Frost Wolf is also an excellent pickup on him, but although I don't think he's going to be going for that necessarily. As here we see the combo. Caught. I don't know what the heck he's doing. As oh. he actually managed to somehow leap away. I mean, the timing on that had to be just perfect, but... It's kind of like leaping, uh, leaping from the pan into the fire there. As she's just like, oh hey, I'll just go six, one, and seven now. Thanks. Yeah, he's dominating. This is not looking good for Port right now. I mean, Drunken Master at this point in the game, I, I, I'm not gonna say he's useless, but he's lost most of his usability because he's he's very useful early to mid game, depending on what kind of farm, how well you start off with him. Well, he's, he's one of those he's heroes a hero that, just... that can do well. It's just right. this isn't the game for him like at all. And it's also, it's just not going to work out if he struggles in, in the early and mid game and can't really just continue to be aggressive, get kills, and get some items that really help getting some minus physical armor and help with his damage. So Chu has 5.3k right now. God knows he's going to be saving for at least one rage buyback because that's what he averages per game is a rage buyback per game. Yeah, I thought uh, he was puzzle box, you know? So. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, he's playing. He's playing angry, testy type heroes. It's kind of weird to see, to be honest. Maybe he's just but. trying to prove a point, you know. <laughs> That's so true, actually. I I wouldn't put it past him. I would not uh, put it past him. Yeah, but well, we can just leave it at that. As I really am just well, at least you know you do have Valkyrie going for the Frostburn. Uh, does pick up a quick blade as uh, Chu's just like, yeah, you guys can't do anything to me. I'm just gonna sit here in mid and arm. This is kind of the point in the game where we're getting a little bit later and we see Mage Vane is going to just continue to take off at this point. I don't really think they have too much that can stop him. Their only chance here, as we have an arrow, is you know maybe if they do hit like a nice five second arrow, get him completely disabled, lock him down, and then maybe pick off a couple of the support heroes, get some kills on someone else. Uh, but right now it's not looking good. As we have Drunken Master getting stuck out in the middle of nowhere, tries to stagger away, and he will be fine, actually. Staccato uh, goes on to Pebbles, and this poor Raps is just stuck in the trees. He's taken down by Torturous. Meanwhile, the chase is on in mid. Shu playing very aggressive, continuing to put the auto attacks in on basically everyone, doing a lot of damage oh. with the combustion. I'll we'll see if he can pop that. Wow, there's oh, a my the God. Is continue to chase. And we have Corrupt Disciples, kind of the last man standing here, along with Valkyrie, who's stuck all the way back in the fountain. There's a Contemptible being thrown down by our British announcer pack, and he. Bloody British. 2 9 and 1. He got a double and, kill with uh, his mana rift. That AoE. Yeah, that was a very well placed uh, mana rift as far as the AoE went. So. That's not good for Port, and I think EZ is really going to try and wrap up the game at this point. Putting some pressure under this mid-rack, the tower goes down. They're, just, they're attacking everything. Like, yeah, we, we got this. We can attack the range racks, too. It's all good. Now, I think we were just and talking about this. Mage Bane's ulti has a 325 AoE, as there we see the concede. So they're just giving up completely. I feel like they could have held them off a little bit longer, but probably, you know came to the conclusion that Mage Bane is just redonkulous right now, so there's not a whole lot they can do. But his ult is 325 AoE, you're very small, and you really do have to get good position. You have to basically, the enemy needs to be next to another enemy, basically, like right next to their own 
teammate to take yeah, that extra damage. Yeah, it's not a substantial AoE. Like, intuitively, having not played Mage Bane all that much, I assumed that the AoE would be a little bit larger than it was, but either way, good placement from Chu. That's two games where he has completely dominated as Mage Bane. And speaking of dominated, I mean, all of his these games minute. went one way or another. You know, it was either a huge game for EZ, just completely destroying, or in game two, we saw Port really take it too easy. Uh, EZ not picking necessarily the best lineup for that situation. But in the end, it all comes down to game three, the decisive game. This is what really counts. And EZ just really, again, they had control of the game. I think they had better picks. They, they really kind of won this in my opinion, at least, in the picking phase. Legion won all three games. That is true, you know, Legion's completely uh, overpowered. Congor was not attempted any of the games. Well, hmm? I, I think just, I hate to jump back to this, I always say this, but I'm so happy about that Congor change. Like, that was one of my favorite changes as far as, like, the entire balance patch they made back at the beginning of the month. So, another big shout out to S2 for that little tweak. Uh, I think that really helped with how the game was played. And also, big shout out of course, Team Easy, taking it all the way. They did manage to beat Han Portal here two games, 2-1 two, for the CSN Finals. And that just about wraps things up. Any final thoughts there on the uh, new Easy lineup or anything like that? Well, they're very unpredictable, I can say that much. So we'll, we'll have to be very weary of what they're going to be doing. I mean, who knows what they're gonna pick? Who knows who's gonna play what hero at this point? Like, there's no way you can predict any of this. Just Chu playing a hard carry pretty much every game. Korok playing support pretty much every game. Semiju was playing, you know, the the ganking killer. Usually he's playing the ganking support in mm -hmm. you know role. And Yoda, well, he's being Yoda. He's just playing the normal heroes, I guess, for the most part. Yeah, Didn't really pick a jungler either. Like, if game. you looked at the the heroes versus the players, you would think that maybe Korok would be playing some of the heroes that Semiju did, and yeah. those roles would be reversed, but, uh, you know, Korok playing a lot of support, and for the most part doing a very good job, so he kind of showing his flexibility as far as what exactly he can play, and how he fits into these various strategies that EZ will be employing, so I think that's good for them, because they have the ability to play a very aggressive um, attacking style of game, or they can sit back and do a farming Chu Mage Bane game. So uh, that, that bodes well for them as far as uh, matching up well against other teams in the future. Yeah, and with that, we're going to wrap this up, and we will not be casting, like we said, for another week uh, because me and Zeno are going to be at NASL doing the last two weeks of the season, which are going to be very exciting, apparently, um, all coming down to the wire, basically seeing who's going to end up going to the playoffs and all that good stuff. So look forward to that, Zeno. Can't wait to spend the night or all week in a hotel with you. That wink, should be wink. a lot of fun. Yeah, I looked it up. There's an Indian restaurant and a Thai restaurant within walking distance. <laughs> oh, uh, boy. And I just want to... I'm going to throw this out here in, in public. Shannon has publicly challenged me to a spicy contest. And I brought up the fact that since we're together, we should go to a Thai restaurant and eat very, very spicy food and see who, in fact, is the manliest man. Well, I already spice. know the result of this. So the result is we will both be able to eat the spiciest of spiciest foods, but the aftermath is I will be crapping but myself I later. I want that. I want the smirk on my face as I hear you screaming and moaning in the bathroom. For well, the I'm not only going to be screaming and moaning in the bathroom, I'm going to be screaming and moaning while we're casting NASL. And yeah, I don't but think listen, the... you, can't, you can't challenge me. You can't threaten me. In my, my own, my, my pride and joy, my ability to enjoy and eat I'll spicy food and then we'll and then just do a out. different challenge because there's another one the ping pong challenge all right no okay so yeah i'll keep you guys updated we will also see if we can find a ping pong table which i actually <laughs> yeah. haven't played in like years and years but well sure me neither either. um so okay no we can eat spicy food and in half an hour we'll play ping pong then you crap yourself i'll take pictures and i'll just be standing over you ping pong all right so this is the deal man. If we, he okay, this is what we're going to do. So. If we, okay, this is what's going to happen. And you will be paying for this, by the way. What? You're, mon, listen, Monday. I have no money on days. We're, we're going we're gonna to go to wherever we're going for NASL Monday. And I think if we're, in fact, casting the next day, then that means tomorrow night, a.k.a. Monday, we will eat curry, the hottest of hot. But you will be buying me Cherry Pepto-Bismol. Okay. And I will have it I before we go to the restaurant so I can consume it as dessert right after I eat the curry. Okay. 
and then we'll find a ping pong table so after I've is, settled guys, my stomach. I will buy him a shirt of abysmal to prevent the, the crapping of himself, the pain in his bowels, and then we will throw down a couple of challenges here if we can. We'll keep you guys updated. Uh, I'm sure it'll be amazing, and I'm sure we won't manage to accomplish either of those things, but we'll see. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and thanks for uh, supporting all this fun stuff, and good job, Team Easy. Big shout-outs to uh, my sponsor here, Trader Joe's Orange-Flavored Cranberries. They're very tasty, and I ate like a third of a bag uh, while casting, so big shout-out to them. And that's all I got. Love you guys. Bye.